from the Mercy One Studio. Man Up, brought to you by Construction Professionals, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. Join Joe Stopulus every Monday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. And now, it's time to Man Up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting today from the Mercy One Studio, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. We're on the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis, and today I am joined by a good friend of mine, Joe Sweeney. He is an author. Uh, he's a businessman. He's a sports agent and a lot more. I uh, will have him on the other side of the break to chat about a couple of books, uh, most recently one that came out last week, uh, to help us in our faith life. Before we do that, let's start in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle and be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Looking at the daily readings today, um, you know, I, I have to talk about this. I, I know I talk a lot, a lot about Acts. You know, these are the readings this time of year, and I get really excited about it. But for people who say the Bible is boring, they clearly are not reading it. Um, so today's readings from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, 14th chapter. And this is when Paul and Barnabas are out uh, trying to, to tell people about Jesus, right? So the Holy Spirit's come. They're out preaching. They walk by a crippled man, lame from birth, who's never walked. He listens to Paul speaking. And Paul looks at him intently, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out in a loud voice, stand up and straighten up on your feet, and jumped up and starts to walk. And the crowd goes nuts, and they all start, they all start freaking out. And uh, <laughs> they said that when the crowd saw this, what they had done, they called out, the gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus, and they called Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was the entrance of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. So then, basically, Paul and Barnabas have to talk them out of offering sacrifices to them, telling they're not gods, and they're just everyday people, and that the Lord, Jesus, is God. Uh, even after their very convincing arguments uh, on why they shouldn't do it, the last sentence of today's uh, first reading is, even with these words, they scarcely restrain the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. I just love it. I love the early church. Uh, the miracles that happened back then still happen today. They do. Uh, we, we see this happening, healings. Uh, we see this type of stuff happening. God said it would happen, and it does. Um, and the Spirit can continue to move through us as well. Um, anyway, I had, to, I had to share that because it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. Uh, when they start bowing down, they, they rename them uh, Hermes and Zeus. Uh, just again, the who can't say that there's not comic uh, relief as well in the gospel. So uh, we're going to do a short break. When we return, my friend Joe Sweeney will be with us. So stick around and we'll be right back. Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting Man Up. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work firsthand. It's very impressive. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. CPCustomHomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Leonetti in the morning is provided by Five Sons Naturescapes. Five Sons Naturescapes is a Catholic veteran-owned family company providing premium outdoor landscaping. Clean up and restore outdoor living space with retaining walls, privacy fencing, pergolas, paver sidewalks, and patios. Issues with soil settling and water around the foundation and yard? Five Sons Naturescapes can grade and install drainage tile to help. Five Sons Naturescapes online at fivesonsnaturescapes.com. Thank you to Confluence Brewing Company for underwriting Christ is the Answer with Father Ricardo, heard Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Confluence Brewing Company is a local brewery in Des Moines featuring seasonal and limited release beers. They have cans and growlers to go, apparel, and other gifts for family and friends. Live music is featured in the tap room. Confluence Brewing Company is located off the bike trail south of Grays Lake. Thank you to Confluence Brewing Company for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio on the web at confluencebrewing.com. That's confluencebrewing.com. My help comes from you. You're right here, through. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis, and today I am joined by Joe Sweeney. Joe Sweeney is a friend of mine. He is a best-selling author, a great Catholic man, and I'm actually, we'll just do some of his introduction here uh, while I bring in Mr. Sweeney. Joe, welcome to the show. Hey, Joe, it's great to be with you. I just want to tell your listeners, I know, I've known the Stopulis family for 30 years, and I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I follow your brother, Tim. Uh, um, in his recording, and I'm just uh, thrilled to be here with, with you. Well, Joe, it's been great to have you and your family, uh, wonderful family there in, uh, in Wisconsin uh, at Marquette, uh, great people. So it's always been a pleasure to, to interact with you. I'm glad to have you on the show. We've been trying to connect for a while to get you on. Uh, I'm going to give the listeners a little bit of background, and I'm going to dig in a little bit deeper, too, while we're at it. Uh, on, your, on your background, as far as your business, and then also into your, your recent writings as well. So walk us back. Joe, I know you, uh, my childhood memory of you was Joe Sweeney is Brett Favre's agent. Talk to me about your relationship with Brett Favre and the Packers. Well, I think before I get into that, Joe, I think I've done a lot of things the last 35 years in business. Uh, I've owned manufacturing companies. So I was a sports agent. A lot of people want to talk about of course, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. That's what... <laughs> yeah, but, but I think there's more to that, and I'll get back to the Favre thing. But then I uh, became an investment banker. I'm uh, involved in a lot of private equity. But the one common th- theme of everything I've done is really about networking and connecting with others. And for a period of my life, for a decade, decade and a half, I was a sports agent, represented 24 pro athletes and coaches. But it's really, as you look at your my career, Joe, it's really been a accumulation of great experiences that have built on something. And in the last decade, what I've done is I've, I've written, uh, published, and have spoken on four books. And that's been a whole process, you know, starting with the first one, networking as a contact sport, which I talk about Brett Favre and the whole um, networking as a contact sport. Tough to make a living today, Joe, running around the country telling people that networking's a contact sport oh, yeah. in this day of, of social isolation or distancing. But in the last uh, two or three years, I've really written two books that I think are pertinent to your audience. Mm-hmm. One is After Further Review, The Value of Reflection, and the book that just came out last Friday, which is a book called A Light Shines Through Us. And we can get into both of those books, but both of those books, I think, are really written for men who are really searching for a spiritual or are going down a spiritual path and are looking for meaning and connection in their lives. Well, there's one thing about your books. I'm just going to pull up the, uh, this is the, the people who have, uh, have put their name on it. You got Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup from the Soul. You got Ken Blanchard, uh, from the One Minute Manager, which he's one of my favorite authors. I've seen him speak. Great he's guy, too. And then a, uh, what I call him a friend. He's actually a friend of yours as well. Um, but Cardinal Dolan uh, endorsed your book as well. And uh, unique connection there with Cardinal Dolan. We were sharing stories ahead of time about uh, our connections with him. But Cardinal Dolan, a fan of your work as well. Yeah, he is terrific. Uh, last November, uh, I spent three days in New York. I did a men's re- retreat with him. It was fortunate enough to stay at his eminence's residence on uh, Madison Avenue. And it was one of the most inspiring three days I've had in my life. In fact, Joe, I had a side ache for the first three days I came back because I laughed so hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, that guy is about as joyful. And it sounds like Sister Camille, we'll get into the book in a second, but uh, about as joyful a guy as you're going to meet. Uh, and I've had some time to spend. I had a couple hours with him on a car ride. I've had a couple hours with him at a, a mutual friend's house, and he's just so joyful. Uh, and that's, again, that's why I think he's so effective at spreading the gospel uh, is because people see that and it radiates. It just naturally radiates from him. Yeah. He has uh, an energy and an aura about him that is extremely contagious. And, and people say, what was it like being in New York with him for a few days? It was like going to Memphis and hanging out with, with uh, Elvis for a couple of days. He is an absolute rock star, mm-hmm. and it's amazing. As big of an image as he has, he doesn't have a big ego. No. He is so rooted and centered, and he knows who he is, and he knows he's just a messenger for a power that's greater than us. I love uh, the guy. I think he's so. Great. I was in college. I was a, a mere college student when I remember him back in <laughs> Milwaukee days. You knew him kind of on a, a personal basis back then. Has he changed much uh, from Milwaukee to New York? 
Now, he's a man filled with humor. He said, has he changed much? Yes, he's changed a lot. He's about 30 pounds heavier. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's the same jovial, loving, kind man yeah. that has an infectious personality that when you're around him and you leave him, you want to get back and, and you long to be with him more and more. Uh, and and, he, and he's got that just Midwestern spirit with him too, which I think is great. People in New York can use some of that, that Midwestern spirit. So, <laughs> so Joe, you've written now four books. Uh, the first one, as you mentioned, was Networking as a Contact Sport, which uh, that came out, I mean, I, I don't know, 10 years ago? I can't remember. I, I, I 10 years it. ago this October. Look at that. I got it. 10 years ago. Um, great book. And uh, uh, A, I love the title, but B, it's, a bit, it's definitely a business book, right? Uh, talking, teaching people uh, how to network in their life, in business, and otherwise. Um, That's that, true, Joe. But the, the theme of the book of networking, and it ties to the next the books three and four, the secret of networking, networking is a place we go to give and serve and not get, yeah. which is getting people to reframe what networking is. Most people say, I got to network because I got to get something. I got to get new, new business. I got to get 10 business cards. I got to get, I got to get. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And so the reason um, I built that book around the theme is Sister Camille, my dear friend for 32 years, said, write a book on the prayer of St. Francis, which is in giving we receive. But I said, sister, businessmen aren't going to buy a book on St. Francis, but they will, they will on networking and connection. So the book is really about connection. How do you connect deeper to ourselves, to other people? And then in my later books, how do you create or how do you connect with a power greater than us? Yeah, so let's talk about your, your two most recent books, which I think are very applicable to, to our audience. Uh, give us kind of the rundown uh, on, on what we can learn from those books. Well, the, um, my third book is called After Further Review, and that was something that was percolating in me for maybe 15 years, Joe. And I wanted to write a book about spirituality and how it all fits together. And since I don't have any credentials for that, I'm not a rabbi, I'm not a Catholic priest, I'm just kind of a sports business guy with an occasional potty mouth, um, I didn't have the credentials to do it. So I tried to find a theme, something where people would know me. And as we talked about, I was a sports agent, represented a lot of football players. So I, I started the book based on football themes. And you say, how do you take religion and spirituality into football? Well, I, I start the book at an NFL football game, and when a coach doesn't like a call, he throws the red challenge flag. So the stadium gets quiet, and the, and the official looks at the play from every different angle. When he finally gets the call right, he goes to the 50-yard line, turns his microphone on, and says three words, after further review. So if an NFL official could do that with a play of a football game to get the call right, what if we could all do that with our lives? And I believe the number one challenge we all have, especially men, because we're so conditioned to be busy, is to go in that locker room like, like a football team, figure out what's working and what's not working, and then make adjustments in our life so we come out in the third and fourth quarter charging and um, really living the life that we're all destined to live. But you can't do that unless you get quiet. And, I, um, um, and so it's 14 different themes based on football. But the, the purpose of all of this is it's just not about reflection, John. A lot of us reflect and, and we don't do anything. We call it navel gazing. The purpose of the book is to get you to reflect and then take massive action. And the big 10,000-foot uh, view is, so you don't end up at your deathbed saying, what the hell have I done these last 87 years? You know, so there's a, there's a uh, former NFL player named Matt Burke. He's up in uh, I know Minneapolis. Matt. And he was on the show, and I, I read his book. And he, he, just one chapter, uh, but it's on what he's learned from the NFL that he's trying to bring into his personal life. And the one chapter is talking about um, game film. He talks about on Monday morning we'd watch that game film. Uh, and we'd go back and we'd review how did we play, what blocks did we miss, what happened, and then we'd, we'd work to get better. That sounds like your book, except for that was only one chapter. You're going to give us an entire book on, on reviewing on reflection, because to me that was the best chapter of his book, was it's very tangible that we as men especially were action-oriented, 
Um, but it's also easy to get our heads down and get lost in the shuffle of, I've got to provide for my family. I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Exactly. Where while that's important, we have to take a breath, take a step back and say, all right, am I on the right path? Because now, okay, I'm just going to blank on the quote, but you know, if you're going, oh, it's uh, anyway, if you're going straight and you're going fast, but you're on the wrong path, the best thing to do is to turn around and go the other way. It's either C.S. Lewis or Chesterton, but t- sometimes the best and most, uh, efficient step you can take is to turn around a 180 and run back the other way. Uh, I think to your point, um, that's what we need to be doing uh, is every day reflecting on that. Yeah. And Joe, you mentioned something about we're busy, got to provide for the family. I do a lot of executive coaching and coach a lot of people now. And I, I've seen this a lot that people climb this ladder to success and they make it to the top. And believe me, I've, I've dealt with a lot of highly successful, high net worth individuals. They get to the top of the ladder and they say, oh, crap, my ladder is on the wrong house. <laughs> so part of what I try to do is to get men to get on the, uh, mm-hmm. the right ladder on the right house so at the end of your lives so we can sit there and say, okay, we've uh, lived a life worth living and we've helped other people on their journeys. That's great. So that book was After Further Review. Uh, the other one that just came out is A Light Shines Through Us. Uh, so tell me about this and what, and what inspired you to write this book. Well, this is uh, something I've come, I've totally come clean on. This has been building up inside of me since I've been 15 years old. <laughs> and uh, what inspired me to write this, I had a absolute, um, uh, deep, I want to say deep love affair for 32 years with a woman. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is she happened to be a Franciscan nun. Um, my best friend for 32 years, and very few people know this, Joe, was uh a Franciscan nun named Sister Camille Kleban. To me, she was a modern-day saint. She's the closest thing to Mother Teresa one could ever imagine, with one exception. She loved huge gin martinis, and we drank a lot of them together. Well, she transitioned uh, uh, about 18 months ago, actually about 16 months ago, and at her funeral. She was my best friend. I was with her the night she died and uh, hung with her for, for days as she was dying. And at her funeral, I was inspired from her. I was talking to her at her funeral. I wasn't doing drugs, Joe. I wasn't drinking. But I had this conversation with her about uh, collecting our experiences and conversation about what is the most important topics in life. So if I, if I had to summarize the book, um, I'd really do it into three themes. The name of the book is called A Light Shines Through Us. And it's really a reflection of her life, the light of God shone through her. And if you didn't notice it, you're either brain dead or blind, but, but you could feel it, you could see it. And so I really, I read Tuesdays with Maury. I don't know if you've read it, Joe. I know a lot of your listeners have. And I really based the book on Tuesdays with Maury. And, and the three themes of the book are this. The, the first theme is that sister and I talked about and Einstein said this, all I want in life is to learn to think like God thinks. And what sister and I concluded in the book is God doesn't think. God is an energy, a power, a source of divine um, energy. And the light of God, she kept saying, flows through me to you. So the first one, or, or the challenge with what she said, and this is a modern day saint, how do you stay connected to God more often and for longer periods of time. That's the first theme. The second theme of A Light Shines Through Us is learning how to grow old gracefully. We all want to do that. And again, Joe, this isn't the stuff we talk about at the cocktail parties, or maybe your cocktail parties, but I don't know. No, not at my cocktail parties either, Joe. No. And the third theme we talked about, the last two chapters are on this, learning how to die. And there are two pieces of that. One is sister taught, and she talked to me about this, If you really understand death, there are two thoughts, and they're contradictory. One is, if you can learn to die every day, die to your ego, die to my identity, I am what I do, I am what I have, I am what other people think of me, it's all trash. It's all garbage. But um, to learn how to die every day, and and that's really what death is about. It's transitioning and leaving everything and going to another place, which is better. And the second theme of dying is if you can connect to this source, what we call God as Catholics, you'll never die because you're going back into, um, uh, into God and you will, you will never die. 
And we are so uptight in our society about death. And I've been talking about this for 25 years at cocktail parties. And most people say, hey, Sweeney, did you take your potassium today? <laughs> You're scared of everyone here. So, so and, and it's really, um, a book is about the 32-year relationship with sister and I. And we really examine our faith together, our doubts. We both question organized religion. We study ev- other religions. And Joe, I've talked to some Catholics about the book, and they said, my God, you're talking about other religions, Eastern religions. I can't believe this. Well, Sister thought by studying and understanding in many different cultures and religions as possible makes her a better Catholic. Mm -hmm. And when I say the word Catholic in the book, I use the small c, because Catholic really means universal. And we've done the Big C, Catholic, and I'm not criticizing either, but the word Catholic really means universal. It's inclusive, and Sister not only believed that, but she lived that every day. She was the most outstanding person I've ever met, and a dear friend of your friend, Cardinal Dolan's. Oh, there you go. So so he writes off, obviously, if he's a fan of hers, I'm a fan of hers. Uh, In fact, Joey, I, I hosted about a year and a half ago, actually it was two years ago, April 4th, Sister's 95th birthday. I did a cocktail uh, birthday party for her 95th birthday. She had about 250 people come. And the opening was a welcome from Cardinal Dolan really? on a video, well, you know, celebrating her 95th birthday. By the way, Mr. Sh- Mr. Sweeney, I just to call you Mr. Sweeney. You can tell I've known you for a long time. I just called you Mr. Sweeney and you called me Joey. So that's, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, so where can people get the books? Um, if you go to Amazon, you just okay. do a light shines through us. In the, um, the, the subtitle, Joe, is called A Nun, A Businessman, and the Power of Connection. And this is not just about the connection between Camille and I, but all of us long for this more than anything. We want to long, long, we long to be deeper connected with ourselves, with other people, and to a power greater than us. But again, this isn't the stuff we talked about at the cocktail parties. Hey, again. Sometimes at cocktail parties, depending on how many cocktails I had, these are the kinds of things I would talk about. And Usually it starts out with sports. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, uh, thanks. You know, maybe next time I'll have you on again, and we can talk about Brett Favre stories. Maybe we'll do that next time. Okay. So. All right, Joe. It's great being with you. Say hello to the family. It's been great chatting. All right. Take All right, care. See you, Joe. Stick around. We're going to head to a short break, and we'll be right back. What is the best gift ever? Giving a Catholic education is at the top of my list. Your contribution to CTO helps families send their children to our Catholic schools who otherwise could not afford it. In giving to CTO, you receive the best tax credits ever. Pledge or donate online at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. Information about Pharmatan and other products at ImogeneIngredients.com. Paul and Paul are members of St. Augustine's Knights of Columbus and encourage their brother knights to keep standing for their faith. My help comes from you. You're right here through. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. My thanks again to Joe Sweeney uh, for joining me on today's show. Uh, as you can tell, Joe's very passionate about this, uh, this topic of, of helping people, of sharing the good news with them, and, and helping them, uh, quite frankly, to get on their own feet. And I love the idea. Of, a, of his third book, um, I, I love the idea of reviewing our life. Again, I talked about it with Matt Burke, right? That I think that it's one of the most important things we can do. Um, Socrates says that the unexamined life is not worth living. If we're just going through the motions every day, that's not a life worth living. So in his book, After Further Review, he breaks that down. How can we do that? What can we do in our own lives to review what we've done, where we're going, and as he said, you know, make sure our ladder's in the right house. Because he does. I know Joe. He's, he's worked with a lot of very successful people. 
And if you talk with anyone who works with very successful people, you will oftentimes find that they have emptiness, lots of emptiness in their life. Well, why is that? Well, because what they're doing, what's making them successful uh, and the values they have are maybe not lining up. Maybe they put their head down, they work so hard only to find out that uh, that wasn't truly what was valuable. You know, I know every day I wake up and you know, part of my, my daily reflection, my daily prayers is to make sure that I'm putting my wife first every day, that I'm putting my children first, that God gives me the patience to deal with my children uh, in the way that he wants me to deal with them. Um, and then that uh, with my work that I'm doing, uh, I'm doing the Lord's work within my work. Uh, and I, I try to pray and reflect on those things every day. What am I doing in all those buckets and how am I, how am I treating those people? And then taking a step back multiple times, not, not just once a year, but multiple times a year, every month and saying, is the path I'm on the right path? Is what I'm doing, what the Lord is asking me to do? Uh, so I said, to, I had to thank Joe uh, for his, for jumping on the show today. Check out those books. Uh, go to, go to Amazon, type in Joe Sweeney. Uh, again, you won't be disappointed. The guy is uh, a, he writes really well. So it's, it's entertaining if anything else. Uh, and I think he has some really great insights as well. So Thank you for joining me today on Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis, and it is time to man up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness with Joe Stopulis. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you by Construction Professionals.